U.S. President Joe Biden wants solar energy to power 40% of America's electricity by 2035. Currently, the sun is tapped for just 3% of the country's power generation. The ambitious goal depends on the U.S. Congress passing legislation that incentivizes renewable energy, as well as the widespread adoption of solar power. And that would require drastically lowering the cost of the renewable resource. Low and moderate income Americans are less likely to adopt solar due to issues like lack of access to financing, which perpetuates energy inequalities and leads to lower overall levels of solar deployment. We can buy electric car batteries from Asia or we can make them in America. We can install wind turbines, install wind turbines from Denmark, or we can make them in America. We can allow other countries to corner the market on carbon reduction technologies like carbon capture, utilization, and storage, or we can put our workers in good paying jobs, manufacturing and installing those solutions in America, and we can export them all as well. Let's get more on the story now with our senior business producer, Mobin Nasser, who joins me now in the studio. Hi, Mobin. So US President Joe Biden wants almost half of America's electricity to produce by solar by 2050. It really is an ambitious plan, isn't it? It's a very ambitious plan, Oscar. Look, at current rates, um, if the US is to move, move towards this target and meet it, that would entail uh, technology adoption to scale up uh, by a factor of, of four, quadruple in, in pace, essentially, and that over the next five to seven years, and then at least hold that pace. And of course, we can talk about all that needs to be done in terms of raising awareness and evangelizing this technology and its benefits, but at the heart of the matter is money, right? Now, costs of solar panels and associated technology have come down significantly in the U.S., uh, we're talking about a, a home now. So if a person was to install solar panels on their house back in 2010, they would be able to get electricity at about 50 cents per kilowatt hour. Now, that cost has come down significantly by about 70% uh, to about 15 cents per kilowatt hour now. However, based on this plan, that cost would have to fall down much further to about five. So, so five from 15, you can tell that's a huge difference, right? Um, and, and at that point, we're talking about not, not just the cost of the cells themselves coming down, but also a lot of associated technology that has to become cheaper. So for example, it's possible for a house to install, um, a person, a homeowner to install some solar panels and use that to, to, to meet some of their energy needs. But when you're talking about making this a nationwide or a community or even statewide um, sort of a practice, what you have to keep in mind is, of course, that solar cells only produce energy when the sun is out. And if you are to use the energy at any other times, then what you have to invest in is storage. Huge batteries that could store energy for, you know, entire towns and cities. Um, and given the, 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 the cost of these batteries, it's been coming down also, but of course they are still expensive. So if you are to move um, our comparison from a single home to industrial or commercial or large scale uses, then of course bringing down this price is not just about bringing down the price of, of cells, but a lot of other things will also have to get cheaper, which is perhaps why um, the, bright, the Biden administration is so keen on um, targeting funding towards 
large infrastructure projects, those would be not just um, solar power parks, but also perhaps large energy silos, let's call them. I was really surprised to read that uh, solar only accounts for about 3% of America's electricity production at the moment. Joe Biden wants that to rise to 45% by 2050. Describe to us uh, the current uh, energy mix in America. How does it get its electricity right now? So the United States is primarily dependent on fossil fuels along with nuclear energy. That, uh, those three sources, so coal, um, you know, furnace oil and natural gas, along with nuclear energy, provide 90% of the country's energy. Only about 10 to 11% is being produced by non-fossil fuel um, sources. And even within those are some which are, they do pollute. For example, the use of, of bio-waste. Um, of course, it has, a, it has a conservation component in the sense that this is waste that would otherwise have been in a landfill somewhere that's being repurposed and burnt as fuel. But of course, when you burn it, there are a certain amount of uh, pollutants and emissions that, that it causes. Uh, within that sort of small component of 11% that is being generated from renewable sources, um, within that, solar takes a step behind wind energy, uh, which in at least in, in recent times had been the preferred uh, so to speak, the preferred technology. That, of course, has changed. We've seen a lot of bad press about it also during the, the previous presidency. You would recall uh, President, President, former President Trump railing against wind turbines and how they are causing noise pollution, etc. So uh, really, solar seems to have been a technology that the United States fall, uh, is, is falling, has, has been behind on. It, it hasn't really kept pace with, with other countries. Okay, Mobin, we'll have to leave it there. Mobin Nasser, our senior business producer, thank you as always for that.